You are tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. I'm your host, Lance White. Tonight, my guest is Anna Ram Kalan. In the year 2000, after a profound accident involving a near-death experience, Anna was given a gift of a session with a spiritual teacher, David Waldman. It turned out to be the gift of her life. Her body battered, he said, there is nothing you have to do. In that non-doing space of simply being, she experienced an intoxicating bliss, awe, and gratitude for the splendor and beauty of all creation. Through that pain and bliss, her spirit soared to greet her beloved teacher, Ramana Maharshi, who had crossed over in 1950. Overflowing with true love and compassion, several books of poetry were birthed. The Boy Who Would Be Saged is a chronicle of the life of this Indian mystic, She also penned Duet with Hummingbird, with other award-winning books of poetry, and the fictional novel, Tass. She writes for The Mountain Path, Ramana Ashram in India, The Daily Now as a featured contributor, and mysticpoets.us. To find out more about her inspirational writings and work, you can go to www.anacallana.com. A N. <laughs> Just look it up on the on the blurb here. Anakalan.com. And I want to give a special thanks to Tony Kendrew for bringing us together tonight. So thanks, Tony. Well, let's welcome Anna to the show now. Hi, Anna. How are you? <laughs> oh, hi, Lance. What a lovely introduction. And I say thank you to Tony too, who I know is listening, and also to you for having me on the show. <laughs> Oh, well, I I was just thrilled to have him, uh, you know, talk about you so highly and then to recognize a, another a kindred spirit, uh, you know, in you as I, you know, delved into your work. Um, yeah, well, I feel a kindred spirit with you, Lance. I've just read and enjoyed your book so much. Oh, thank so you. Thank you. I got yeah. through that really fast. <laughs> it's, it's, I did. Well, it was it was a quick, juicy read. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> not for the not for everyone, for sure. Um, right. Well, well, the, the thing that I thought you said that was so beautiful was that you know life is about opening your heart and and loving one another, and I feel like that is exactly how I feel about life. Yeah. So I feel we're kindred spirits in that. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I, yeah. I mean, it does kind of all boil down to that, and we just each have different ways of expressing that. Um, That's true. Yeah. And I, I wanted to I would take you back uh, to your near-death experience because I was just listening uh, to uh, a show with PMH Atwater on near-death experiences. And it it just, there was a period of time when I just couldn't get enough of it. And it's such a, it's such a wonderful window of the soul and of eternity and, and, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. And yours is is beautiful and your description of the dazzling colors in the desert. So I thought that maybe we could start with, with the near death experience and ask you, uh, what happened? You mean during the near-death experience? Yes, I, yes. I, I would like to know myself, and I think that would, unless you don't want to talk about it. No, absolutely. I'm, I'm happy to. I, I'll backtrack a little bit and tell you that uh, I was in Ireland at the time the accident happened. I was teaching at the university, and I was on my way back to my room on campus, and it was a time of a brief time of prosperity in Ireland, and so they were building everywhere. And I was just walking on the footpath, and a truck came up behind me. I heard it, um, but it went over a bump. It was going fast, 
it went over a bump in the road, and there were a lot of logs on the back of the truck, and they weren't tied properly, so they swung off and cracked me over the back of the head. Mm. And so I went flying through the air, and that's when I died. And it was a, it was an amazing experience. Um, what I can say is that the overall experience was seeing how absolutely everything in this world, absolutely everything down to the most minute detail, is happening in utter perfection. No matter how horrific, no matter how dark it seems, that everything is happening utterly perfectly. You know, I was obviously not in my body anymore, and I was looking down at this scene of this broken woman that was blood pouring out of her head, and people were crying and screaming and calling, you know, calling out for someone to ring for an ambulance. And I couldn't understand why everybody was so upset. All that that I could feel was how perfect everything was. And there was absolutely no identification with this broken woman. Um, And the other thing that was experienced was this sense of pure and utter love that everything in this world is infused with it. And it it was just, you know, unspeakably beautiful. Um, And then... There was this experience, which I, I don't talk about often. I mean, it, all of it has, feels like it was so sacred and an incredible gift. Mm-hmm. But there was this seeing of many, many caves, and there were beings, just a sense of these beings within all of these caves, which were very dark, the caves were. Mm-hmm. And I... I had been, when I had been walking along this footpath, I had all my students' papers in my hands, and I was trying to hand over what I had to any any of these beings who'd come forward and say, saying to them, would you please take over my teaching, because I'm going to be gone. And no being, nothing came forward, absolutely nothing. And there was a sense that it was, I had to do it myself. And at that moment, the... Um, you know, oxygen mask was slammed onto my face and I came back into my body and I realized that 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 broken woman was in fact me. Mm. And after that, I mean, there was a long period of recuperation because I was completely battered and broken. Um, And I came back to America when I had healed enough. Um, And... As you mentioned, I was lucky enough to meet my teacher, David Waldman, and during the period of um, starting to meditate with him, a lot of uh, long suppressed memories of really intense um, violence and sexual abuse that had happened in childhood came back, and it was a blow to the head, I'm sure. And there was a seeing, I mean, it was a very long night, dark night of the soul, but there was a seeing that um, it had to happen that way, that it was an incredible blessing that I had, you know, I'd been living kind of a shadow life. And, you know, I, I sort of left the world for about, oh, seven or eight years, and I just dove inward, meditated, met, met in the way I hadn't been able to meet that intense pain. You know, I had pushed it down because it was so horrific. Mm. Mm-hmm. And with the guidance of David and then Ramana, who flew into my life, um, I felt completely held. So I was able to open my heart to all of that pain and meet it and see it all the way through and got to experience that it all arose out of love, that there was no perpetrator, you know, that violence begets violence begets violence. There was no no one to point a finger at. Mm-hmm. Um Certainly there's misguided actions, but everybody's looking for love. I think we all know that Mm -hmm. and wanting to be loved. And so I got to see after many, many years, probably it took 10 years to really see that those beings in the caves that I had seen were really aspects of my own psyche. They were all those dark shadow places that I had not refused, but been unable to meet, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mm -hmm. before that. Mm So it felt like it's such a gift to see through all of this horror and see that it really comes out of love, all of it. And and I know that that can be a controversial way to see how it was, but through meditating and really, really opening up to it as fully as I could, I had the same experience 
as I did when I died, that this whole life, even though it's a mystery and still remains a mystery, Hmm. is infused with love, every single aspect of it. Hmm. Wow. Well, I, I, I certainly resonate to everything you said, and I'm sure that there will be many people that will hear this that that will open the door for who will then be able to release, look at, and release their own inner dark night. Um, because yeah. Because yeah, you've, you've, you know, you've kind of come out and said this, and now it's out, you know, and... Uh, we all have these things that we're trying to repress, and that is one of the problems with peeling away the layers of the onion to get to the to the well to the core, the nothingness within. Um, right. You had a spiritual. Uh, uh, what were your visions like when you were in the desert? Weren't you with uh, David? And how did I the was? Yes, I'll, I'll get to that just in a sec, but Lance, I'd just like to say that it, that is my prayer for anybody who's listening, that it takes incredible courage, incredible courage to meet, um, you know, everybody has wounds from the past, and that's how the ego is formed, you know, it's a way to protect ourselves, and we need that at certain times in our lives, but I can honestly say that the life that I had before the accident, before meeting all of this pain was just like cardboard, and I feel so freed. I wasn't even aware of the psychological and emotional weight that I'd been hauling around, Mm -hmm. you know, for 40 years. And so I really encourage anybody who who is listening to to really, um, as much as they can, embrace, you know, find a good, you know, good counsel, someone they really trust. Mm-hmm. to help them through it. But it, it's, it, for me, it's been the most incredible blessing of my life, and it's why I had to come back, because it wasn't it wasn't finished. You mm-hmm. know, I'd been kind of living a half-life, and so I feel now, you know, with all those kind of um, sort of protective shell, you, you talk about the onion, just all of those layers peeled off, I feel so free, you know, mm-hmm. and so, so um, able to embrace the world. You know, mm-hmm. there's just no uh, filter there anymore. Mm. So, so to get back to your question about Ramana, mm. um, yeah, I, I after I met David, um, he offered uh, a retreat in Mexico, and I wasn't even sure at the time that I could do it with my body. It was still really healing, but he mm. encouraged me, and he said he had a feeling that it would be a powerful retreat for me. And so I went, and as soon as we got, we stayed in this beautiful house, you know, just, you know how it is down there, these beautiful homes with flowers Mm -hmm. everywhere, and the sun was shining in the sea, and it had been such a dark time in Ireland after the the recuperation period. You know, I grew up in Ireland, and so, of course, I had to go back to the scene of the crime and, and... Sort of mm. We live it there, and so uh, it had been an incredibly grim, grueling period. And so when I got mm. to this place, it seemed like paradise in Mexico. I was just overwhelmed by the beauty, and you know, just was just in love at first sight. And um, we had meditation, you know, every day and in the evening. And I, at that time, could only lie down. I couldn't, I couldn't sit because of my body. But I would lie on the floor and I would look at the picture of Ramana uh, on the altar. I knew nothing about him. Mm-hmm. But I would just sort of watch him. And my heart was, at that time, it was so broken open. You know, I think there was no room, really, for God before that. But I was so shattered open. And looking at him one evening... Um, you know, I don't know how to explain this, but there's this beautiful sense of honey in the air, and Roman just flew into my heart. Mm-hmm. I just felt him, you know, sort of airlift into my heart, and it was the most ecstatic experience. It, it's funny, I didn't know at the time, but his name means he who lives in the heart of all beings. Um, you know, he's a manifestation of the divine that really spoke to me, and I just got blasted open. I just was so in love with everything. I There was a man at the meditation, and David was talking to him, and he said, um, he just said something like, praise God, and it just 
blew the lid off everything, and I realized that there was nothing else to do in my life but praise God. <laughs> and I just, I just went running out, wasting out into the desert, and you know, on my hands and knees, just crawling around in, in ecstasy, and wow. every single thing looked so beautiful to me, and so, so precious. You know, just this gift of being alive again, and having a body, and you know, having these senses and this ability to just um, imbibe this world. So it was an incredibly beautiful time, and, um, you know, it's just been a falling more deeply and deeply in love with with Ramana, with life, with David, with, with all of it. And, you know, during the, the process of this dark night, you know, his presence was so palpable, and, and now, you know, it's been many years, Lance, in about oh, 11 or 12 years, mm-hmm. um, and now it just feels like he lives inside of me. You know, it's it's actually why my name is Anuam because David gave me that name because it's Ramana's name backwards, and I've been so in love with Ramana. You uh-huh. know, I, I um, have been po- you know poems have been pouring out for him for years. Wow! So that's that's what happened in Mexico. <laughs> wow! It is so beautiful. Uh, you know, uh, those of us who may may or may not get to have that experience, can have that through you. Um, not everybody yeah. will be able to have that kind of uh, mystical journey, but we're each in our own mystical journey, and we're having our own versions of it. So um, I oh, like your version. I think that's quite a beautiful uh, expression of it. And, uh you know, uh, well, thank you. <laughs> your lucky. poetry is so beautiful, and I was just reading it before the show, and and it just put me in a, a beautiful space of you know love and and uh, it's they're wonderful uh, books that you have the poetry books. So um, clearly, your cup overflows, and yeah. isn't that the nature of the divine love that it's it just it fills you up to the point where it's overflowing and. And it has to come out and just keep, uh, you know, keep in abundance like, well, like Aquarius, the wa- you know, the water bearer, you know, it's pouring yeah. the water of love and consciousness and healing uh, all over uh, our oh. little piece of sand. Absolutely. That's a beautiful way to put it. It is. I mean, this world is so overflowing I and mean, it's so abundant and you know, it's just that that's how it's expressed through this body, through poetry. Mm. You know, in fact, I had the novel that you spoke about I had written before the accident. It was actually mm. published afterwards, but um, after the accident, it just felt like, you know, being so so shattered open, I just felt like um, I, poetry was the only genre, the only form that I could mm. write in because it distills everything down to the essential. You know, it strips away all artists. It just it says it like it is, with no kind of ec- extra, mm-hmm. extra mm-hmm. anything. And so I, poetry was really, you know, my life blood for those those ten years. I just wrote, and you know, when things were at their most unbearable, you know, I would just be up in the night writing poems, and mm. it really, really got me through. Mm. So there, there's a beautiful line by a, an English poet. Um, that really saved my life. You know, she she said, um, it was almost impossible to be here. Almost impossible to be here. And just the word almost saved my life, that it wasn't completely impossible, but just almost, and that she hadn't just felt it was impossible, but she'd triumphed up enough over it to be able to write a poem about it. Mm. You know, an unbearable time in her life, and that that one line really saved me. I knew that if she could get through it and write about it, I could too. Mm. Wow. Well, you know, that's uh, that's kind of where we're at on this planet now. Um, many of us have gone through uh, our own form of a near-death experience, or you know, suffering and hardship. And we look around and see, you know, so many things going on that look like they're taking us in a very dark direction. And, and on some level they are. But uh, if we have 
if we can spiritualize or see with spiritual eyes, then we can see beyond that, and each one of us can express our own beauty and love and compassion, and that's what changes the world when you go within. Is, is it, is it, am I saying that right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's really a beautiful way to say it. And I think, you know, I feel, for me, you know, I used to be so um, you know, into the intellectual and the, the mental, and it feels now just living life from the heart, no matter how dark or intense the experience can be, if our hearts are open to it, it just feels like anything can be endured and moved through. Mm. And for me, that that feels like it's really the key, the the heart. And David is a, an incredible teacher in that way because that's how he lives, and and certainly Ramana. But it feels like for for all of us, you know, it's so easy to close down when things get rough and we've been hurt or wounded or rejected, and and you know, it, it can be so lonely, mm. <laughs> you know. And and if, if the heart can just stay open and um. It can be such a beautiful, it can be very vulnerable. You know, vulnerability is strength, really. And it just feels like it can be such a tender and beautiful experience um, to open our hearts to what feels really hard. For me, you know, even lately when there's been times that have been difficult, when I've just really opened my heart, it's felt so raw and so rich and so beautiful. Um rather than just having this anesthetized resistance to it. Mm, mm-hmm. So I feel the heart is the key. Mm, mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I was just uh, sharing with a friend who <clears throat> was being drawn into an intellectual uh, debate about a particular point, and uh, it was really uh, humorous to read uh, some of the logic and mind games that we play and they're really so funny they're like little children with uh, toys trying to you know hit each other and you know well my toy's prettier you know and oh my toy's prettier and the other one no my toy and if they don't get their way well you know what happens the kids get bloodied and uh, (laughs) it seems there are a lot of kids on the planet today huh what do you think I don't know. I mean, I I try to make a lot of space for everyone. You know, I just feel like what you said earlier, it's like everybody, you know, has their own unique beauty. I mean, it's such a a miracle when you think about it that everybody looks different. I mean, unless we're, you know, twins or something, everybody has a unique way of being and responding to the world. And even our voices, you know, that's something that intrigues me. Everybody's voice is unique. You know, when you pick up the phone and you hear someone's voice, you know who it is. And it, it feels to me that we all have our own gifts and ways of being in the world. And so I, you know, I've been so humbled in my youth by having judgments, you know, strong judgments about the way things should be or mm-hmm. how others should be. And I feel you know, that's really been humbled. I feel like I, you know, I just try to honor all of the life on the planet. Um, you know, I may not gravitate towards a certain, you know, group or, right. you know, anything anymore, but I just, I just trust, again, you know, yeah. I, I try to remember what I was shown when I died, but everything, you know, there's room for everybody, and everything is happening perfectly. Yeah, uh, yes, we cannot hear that enough. <laughs> yeah. We just cannot well, hear that enough. Do you notice that, um, well, of course you do, but uh, one thing that I see is that, um as I'm uh, more heart-centered, that synchronicity starts lighting my way, and everything, there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to do. It's like an unfoldment or just, you know, a matter of being present and observing what is, what's happening. And it's magic. It's like a magic carpet ride. It is. It is. You know, in India, they talk about Maya, this sort of divine play. And I think if we can step out of the way and let it happen, it can be incredibly magical. You know, I I certainly can attest to that. So, yeah, I think it it is wonderful. And I think that that the thing is that there's such a sense, people, you know, we're all programmed to feel like we have such a sense of control. We can control how things are. And it's been my experience that you can't, that life is going to happen the way it will. 
you know, what we can do is respond as best we can with our hearts open and, like you say, enjoy the ride. I mean, just reading your book is an incredible eye-opener, and I could just feel what a beautiful heart you have and how open you are and tender and loving, even through everything that you've been through. Mm. And it just it just feels like when we can kind of, you know, realize that we aren't the doer, we aren't in control, mm. that... Life can happen, and wonderful synchronicities can happen, and happen all the time. You know, there's so many miracles happening in what people would, you know, call ordinary. You know, I find yes. if you really are open, just there are extraordinary things that are happening all the time. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, how would you uh, recommend that people go about ex- experiencing this for themselves? Um experiencing what exactly well seeing the the miraculous in the ordinary um for instance you know there's that saying about uh what does the master do when he, he gains enlightenment and of course we all know the answer to that he chops wood and carries water and uh when we're in an altered state of consciousness in that world that you were describing on the desert um i'm i feel that that is the real world and the world that we see with our five senses is is the dream. So right. even washing dishes, if one looks at it and is present and, and is observing, the, you move into the mystical. Right. I think you, you've really answered the question beautifully. <laughs> I think that's exactly it. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> no, I love it. I love what you said. And I, and I think you're so right on. You know, well, I think... Thank you. It's such it's such a hard thing I think to do to be completely present all the time. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But, it, but it is such a wondrous thing if you can be because there's so much happening you know in in this dream you know it, it, um, all the time and if we can really be present to what whatever is, is happening at any one particular moment just to take any moment and just open yourself to it. Um, it's an amazing thing to do, and you know, for me, I um, on this path, I spend a lot of time in silence, and that really helps as a support. So when I, you know, I meditate, and I'm in silence quite a lot. So when I'm not, when I come out, that sort of foundation is there, and there's a sense of, um, you know, being more present. Not always, of course, the mind gets busy at times. But when I do, you know, just sitting in the garden or watching a bird or, you know, like mm. you say, washing dishes, even vacuuming, you know, that that if we are really present and open to it, it can be a wondrous experience. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, I had to remove myself from uh, the noise of the city. And so I live in a, you know, in an area where there's a lot of nature and there's no electric lights outside and uh, it's quiet and uh, I don't play television and I don't use a lot of music and things. And what I've noticed over time is that that uncomfortable feeling, which uh, was here for, oh, you know, many years uh, uh, at silence, gradually dissolved and I started hearing more subtle uh, vibrations or tunes or frequencies and pretty soon I started tuning into the nature of the spirit of things, you know. What's, what, there's, a, there's like a spirit or a life force in everything. And uh, it's quite an amazing, uh, it's quite an amazing process when you start hearing the wind and, and feeling it as a, as a consciousness or as a being. Um, yeah. Do you have... Yeah. Experiences like that as well, where you're just, you know, it's just a continuum of of you need to uh, just a spiritual Speak energy up. or energy that uh, flows. BBS Radio. Dot com. We're back, Ramana. I mean, uh, Anna. <laughs> yeah, hi. same thing. <laughs> well, we we went to the other side and we returned uh, to uh, help humanity. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, um, y- y- 
I, I think I, you were talking about the, just the sense of, you know, experiencing, you know, having more palpable experiences of the sort of how everything is infused with this energy, this spiritual energy, as you said, and I think that that's really, really beautiful, you know, um, and I, I think that for me, the way I would describe it is that it's more like um, the world, instead of me moving through the world, this on a ROM form moving through the world, it's like the world is sort of flowing through me. Mm. And so yeah, it's, it's a very beautiful experience when I'm really, really open to it. It's like... Um, you know, sort of, you know, you use in your book, you talk about sort of getting out of the way. And mm. that that's sort of the experience. So, so then the whole world just flows through, and it feels like there's such less and less separation from anything, from people, from, you know, the wind, from the natural world, from anything. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. there, there's a much greater sense of, you know, if, if I brush past somebody in the store, I can feel, you know, if they have pain in their heart, um, yes. And it's like th- there's so much less separation in that way. Um, so that's how I would describe it for me. It, it's um, um, sort of, you know, the, the body, the being, being fine-tuned to, um, you know, to experience the world in a more um, open and profound way. Mm. And that means all, all of experience. You know, it feels for me, um, you know, my life say, before and after, but before the actor was sort of black and white, and now it's sort of experiencing everything from, you know, the height of ecstasy, as we talked about in the desert, to the absolute depths of um, intensity and, and pain. You know, it's like you're not, if you're open to experiencing the world, you get to experience everything, absolutely mm-hmm. everything, and so it's much richer and fuller and more alive and vibrant, and it can be very intense. But I would much rather live, it's such a more full-bodied experience, I would say, than my previous life, which was, um, you know, just like plastic. I, I just saw things in, you know, one dimension, sort of. Yeah. Yes, well, I, you know, that was a question that I had uh, for you that I was had written down, that uh, so many people in, in the in the present age uh, talk about being that we're all one and that there is no separation that there are we're you know we uh, think of ourselves as unique and frag- fragmented or uh, individual people and we are that and we are also each other and so what we do to our, another and to ourselves affects the whole uh, consciousness of the collective so can you come up with some uh, thoughts on the uh, the essence of the phrase that we're all one? Well, you know, Ramana's teachings, he, he lived in a cave for many years. He lived in silence. Um, you know, he had his awakening at 17 and went off to Holy Mountain Arunachala in India and meditated. And then people sensed that there was someone something very holy in him and the ashram formed around him. He, he came out of silence really for the sake of the people. He didn't speak much, but what he did say is that we aren't separate, that we are all connected. And so the, the teachings are called, even though there's no real dogma, they're called the non-dual teaching and the sense of it not being dual. I mean, we live in a dualistic world, mm-hmm. you and me, you know, black and white, mm-hmm. but our essential nature is not separate, and I feel like that's the process, really the road that I've traveled um, since I've met him, you know, this sense that we are we are all connected, and, you know, the fact that, that, you know, you can feel what's happening inside somebody else just by being, you know, not even being in the same room, you know, mm-hmm. if you really connect with someone, you can feel them across the country, and, and I think that that's so beautiful because we tend to be so isolated and, and individual and alone. And I really feel like, you know, there's just, we are all the, like sort of jewels on this sort of strand, this huge strand of experience, this kind of amoeba, um, and how we are all interconnected. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it, it, mm-hmm. It's a very beautiful thing, and I think it's, it's a process for many people to get to that um but it's it i feel like that's really really how it is yeah 
the play of the world is about separation, but it, it's not what's so. You know, our, we're, our divine nature, we all came out of the same source, and we're all going to go back into it. Yeah, right. Right. Well, you know, the, the, one of the things that frees uh, people up when they have a near-death experience or uh, when they go through uh, non-dual teachings is the awareness that uh, we're infinite and eternal and we don't, that we don't die, that, you know, the physical death is just, uh, it's a crossing over. So, <clears throat> so this life is just a continuum that the, that right. the soul or spirit uh, <laughs> enters the body and it leaves the body and there's never a moment when it isn't. So, um, you know, we, we may find ourselves coming back uh, to a situation that we help to create. So it seems like a, a fruitful uh, way of thinking to see that we may be creating something that we're going to have to experience ourselves. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that it's true. It's like Ramana would say that, you know, we are, you know, that this kind of identification with this brief experience in the body is, is, is worthless because yeah. it's such a brief a brief um, experience, uh, um, you know, and that, that you know, our divine nature lives on eternally. It's eternal. And so, you know, it feels to me that, that this is, you know, if we can embrace this life as much as we can and just also attend to our divine nature and trust in that, that, you know, that's the key. You know, I have, I have a poem maybe... Uh, if if you don't mind, I could share. I'd it with love you. it. Yes, because it it kind of relates to this. Um, you know, there's there's actually two. One, you know, the thing Ramana advised was to just ask, "Who am I?" You know, "Who am I really?" He he had a an awakening. He was just a young boy, sixteen or seventeen, and lying on his bed one day, and he experienced that his body was dying. I mean, out of nowhere, he wasn't sick. Um, and instead of being fearful and calling for help, he just embraced it. He let the body just kind of turn into a corpse. And he realized that, you know, his body would be carried off to the funeral pyre and become ash eventually. And, uh -huh. and But the, the real eye, the divine eye, would live on. And so he asked, you know, he, he advised those of us, you know, who are really wanting to know who we really are beyond this body, is to ask, who am I? You know, sort of the golden question, who am I? Um, so I have I have um, two poems, but I, I think I'll read this one first, and we'll see how time is because it relates to your question, um, David. In in one of our retreats, um, he he gave a monologue, and he said, you know, if this were the last day of your life, if this were really your last day, what would you do? How would you spend it? And um, so this is what I came up with. And it's called Into Freedom. When Rama and the angels come for me, I lie in the grass and loosen this garment of flesh, both burden and joy that has carried me. And I am in love with each tender breath, with each miraculous gift bequeathed, the bird on the branch, the broken girl, it is a perfect tapestry. The mirage of old stories rises up in the air. Fireflies merging into one beam of light. And I see now that I have loved one man, one woman, one creature, and they are all me. When my eyes flow into his, it is a wedding kiss for eternity. And as I melt into the stars, the field is flooded with flowers, blossoming into that delicious, radiant heart. Mm. So it just, you know, I was feeling when I wrote that, just you know, loving one man, one woman, one creature, that to all me, you know, we hear often that everything is our own reflection. 
you know, everybody needs some aspect of yourself being reflected back to you. We're like mirrors walking around, mm. and mm-hmm. it, just, it just feels to me that that's, you know, that's how it is. That So when I meet someone that I have issue with, I, you know, I say, well, this, this is just part of my own self, and mm-hmm. I try to open to it and see what it is in myself that's being mirrored, rather than judging that person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, it does seem that <clears throat> we spend a lot of time being conditioned to uh, believing that we're not complete without someone else in our lives. And, uh, <laughs> of course, the, there's a lot of money to be made in that, in those various businesses that come out of us feeling insecure, that we're not uh, okay the way we are, that we need to try this product or go to that gym or have the perfect made, and uh, I think that's kind of collapsing, don't you? Well, yeah, I think that's, I, I don't know if it's collapsing, but I think, you know, it's like with all the religions and different things in the world, there's there's something for everybody. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> right. in, in a different place and they have different needs, so a therapist may be helpful at some point. Oh, that's um, right. And a, you know, the 12-step program is incredibly helpful for people at times. And it just feels to me that there are all of these these things. But, but ultimately, you know, we are, you know, what Ramana says, and I have experienced it myself, we are complete. We are complete and entire, and everything that we need is available to us from within. And I think there's just a fear of, of in people to really turn within and find the secret, find the gold key inside. Mm. You know, there was a, a famous French philosopher, I forget his name, but he said, you know, all the troubles in the world are caused because man is afraid to stay alone in a room, you know, to spend time alone in a room. And I, mm. I you know, that struck me years ago, even before I stumbled onto this path. And, and it feels like, you know, that there is, You know, if we really do look into who we truly are, not this transient body, but who we really are, our divine nature, that, you know, we are complete and perfect and whole. And there was such a sense of that last when I died. You know, it was like so beautiful to be freed of a body, to be freed of that gravity and that weight, and to feel the love and the perfection in everything. You know, there was no sense of separation whatsoever, but there was no identification either with the body. And I feel like, you know, if we can really attend to who we really are, you know, that will give us everything we've ever dreamed of and more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know how much how much more time we have. Um, we have plenty of time. <laughs> Oh, we do. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We're fine. Okay, because I, I, I have this poem, you know, that I may share at the end about who am I. So. Let's, yes, let's do that. Okay, you want to hear it now? Yes, that would be great. Okay. Um, uh, just because, yeah, well, I'll just read it. Okay. Who am I? Dip your heart in the golden question. And the ocean of knowing will yield its nectar. What has always been you will disrobe, will unveil itself, so you may marry your beauty, your singular truth, so you may become that one love that has waited lifetime, that has never, ever abandoned you. Fall into me, lay down the path, Let your mind be freed of its shackles, so you may shine as that light, O illumined one, your very birthright for eternity. Mm. Mm. Well, you know, it's just my wish that we all remember the light that we are, you know, and we will regardless when we die, but it's 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 so beautiful to, to recognize who we are, the wholeness and the completeness of of who we are while we're here in this body. 
Mm-hmm. It makes it such a rich, rich experience. Did you have any sense when you were on the other side, uh, or when you were at one, uh, when you had your near-death experience, that there was uh, some kind of, hmm, well, I, I don't know how else to say it, because it, the, the words are not, are not uh, enough, but uh, anything similar to some kind of divine hmm, reason or plan or uh, something that... It's, I, I don't know how else to say it. It's, it's kind, of, kind of a uh, kind of an odd. Well, I, the, the only thing I could, yeah, I mean, I I wasn't shown anything, um, you know, in terms of I, I think what you're talking about. The, what I can say is that you know the, the divine order that I was shown is the, is the perfection and everything that's happening, and, and the love that everything is made of. You know, mm-hmm. and for me that was plenty. I think, you know, I had to come back into my body to learn. It's really unlearn, actually. That's a better way to put it. To unlearn everything that I thought I knew. Mm-hmm. It's been kind of an unraveling process these mm-hmm. last ten years, just sort of letting go of what I. You know, the mind always wants to know. Always wants to know. And you know, Ramana said it, that the mind is what kind of pulls us down. You know. It, <clears throat> You know, if we could just annihilate the mind where we're afraid that if that happened, you know, we'd lose all control, you know, we'd have, you know, we'd be basket cases. But actually, you know, when the mind is freed, the body, you know, it's programmed. It, it, the mind is a fine instrument to get us from A to B, but to to try to use it as the, the sole navigating tool, you know, can just lead to trouble. And, and so for me, it just feels like... Um, it's just sort of unlearning everything that I was so wedded to and thought was right and true. And, you know, what I do know is love. And what I do know is I trust the perfection of everything. And what I do know is that our divine nature is, is love and light and that we are whole and complete, just as we are. You know, no matter what, our, we imagine our imperfections and frailties to be that that we are all perfect, mm-hmm. and, you know. So it's it's that feels like a a beautiful way to to live, and I'm I'm still learning, unlearning. <laughs> right, right, right. It, yeah. it, it seems like uh, much of our language uh, is uh, geared around phrasing things backwards, and. Um, uh, you know, the one thing that I do know is that every experience that I've had that seemed like it was uh, a major trial or a hardship somehow has fit in in a seamless web of of experiences that all contribute and tie together. And once you're through that, and you, it's a kind of like uh, it's hard to describe, but it's kind of like um, you, it's like a tapestry and. Um, that's kind of the point when the the balloon, the hot air balloon, takes off, so to speak. Yeah, and, that's, uh, that's, yeah. that's a beautiful way to put it, Lance. I think you're, you're such a poet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that it's just beautiful how you say it, and I think that that's really true. I mean, even reading your book, I could feel that with all of the intensity that happened in your life. But what I felt when I came away was, was, like you said, like this amazing tapestry, this amazing collage. And, you know, you speak so often about being held, you know, having guardian angels being really held through it all, that it couldn't have happened any other way. It happened absolutely perfectly. And that all of the things that were difficult for you or in any life were just perfect in, in sort of the unfolding of this incredible um, work of art that is yes, alive. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, and it's when I resist uh, what is that I. That's when I start to get into uh, the friction and difficulties. Is when I'm in resistance, but even the resistance shows me something that I can learn about myself. So, you know, it doesn't seem to matter. You know, if you right. drop a glass and you break it, well, my, you you might. Uh, find uh, a diamond on the floor. <laughs> you know, you yeah, never know. It, so. Exactly. I, I think that that's really true. And I think, you know, it's like everything, every experience um, contributes. 
and you know nothing is ever wrong. But it's you know David talks about um, you know quotes Ramana a lot. You know this sense of and you can speak of Ramana as God or the divine or whatever it is, whatever mm-hmm. manifestation of the divine speaks to you. But you know he says, find me in every single thing. Find me in every single thing. So if you drop a glass on the floor, you know, instead of thinking, oh, God, I made a mess, I shouldn't have mm. done it, if I'd been more careful, but to find God, find the divine in that. And, you know, it's, it's a life's work to do it, but I think that that's, um, it's such an amazing way to live, to trust that it's all, you know, all coming out of the same source. It's all, everything is divine, no matter how it, how it looks or seems. Mm-hmm. Every, Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and it does seem that um, the mind wants to put its own interpretation on events, and uh, you know it's colored by so many different uh, different things that um, you know it, it just hangs on to things. So uh, it's it's really best to be out of your mind. <laughs> well, it is. That, that's why I've, I have found you know meditation to be so helpful, and, and then you know to just ask. You know, Wellman has said for people who are more kind of mentally inclined um, to ask just who am I, just to make that a constant question. Who am I really, mm-hmm. you know, beyond this body? You know, before, who was I before I came into this body? Who will I be afterwards? Mm-hmm. And, and to just really, because the mind can, you know, it can be so vicious at times. You know, it, it can be helpful if we if we don't let it, you know, lead it around on a noose, but we just use it for what's needed. But I, I do think it can really, you know, if we can sort of try to live from the heart and just let the mind take a back seat, um, mm-hmm. it, it would help a lot. Yes, so, no matter what language anybody is speaking, even if we don't understand each other, you can feel the love in a smile, uh, oh, you know. Yeah. It's just amazing, and when somebody uh, that you can't communicate with is injured, it, the instant reaction is to help and to uh, nurture, and what can I do? And, uh, you know, so that's a language that transcends uh, all cultures, and really it seems that uh, there's a growing empathy, a uh, global empathy that's opening up uh, that is a positive force for us to realize that you know, we we are all united, and uh, it's a wonderful feeling to experience that. Yeah, that's so wonderful, Lance. It is beautiful. I remember somewhere in the past reading about that, you know, that there was a study and that, that we are all programmed to help one another, that it's kind of an instinctual quality within us. And I think that, that that's another, another key to the fact how, that we are all connected and that there is a love underlying everything. Mm-hmm. And as you've been saying, uh, when, you, when, I, when you look at the outside world, we're actually projecting, and when you go within, uh, that is the real world, that uh, all the answers are there. There's nothing missing, and um, I, I know I've had many questions over the years, and I still have questions, and I have concerns, and the rest of it, but I have to remember that everything, all the answers, and... Um, and the questions also are all inside me, so there really is nowhere to to go other than within for everything. Yeah, I, it's absolutely true, and and it's you know we are programmed to go the other way, so it 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 takes maybe effort at first, but it, then it starts to become more of a you know a natural inclination, and and certainly the key is inside. Um, you know, I think we've all learned from experience trying to get that love or whatever it is we want from outside. Is is it never really works? You know, it works mm-hmm. for a while, and then the ego satisfied, and then we want more, and something doesn't go our way, and it just becomes you know, it's it's sort of never satisfied. Mm-hmm. Whereas if we go inward, it just gets richer and fuller and deeper and more profound, mm-hmm. and that feels like. You know, I feel like, you know, this accident was, was the greatest blessing of my life because I, um, you know, I wanted my old life back after the accident, and now I realize it was perfectly divinely orchestrated, you know, down mm-hmm. to a T. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I'm so grateful. I, I may never have turned inward, you know, otherwise, but it just, it was, it was destined and it was, it was so great. And it's my wish for everyone that they can really realize the fullness of who they really are. Yes. Yes. And without having to go through an accident. <laughs> Right. Well, you know, everybody has their own way. <laughs> right. You know. Yeah. I mean, I've had to go through I, I, several of those myself. You <laughs> have, I know, and, and you know, what a, you know, what a beautiful being you are, and have you know, have come out of it and through it. So it's just, it's, you know, everybody. It's it's why you know when I teach I teach spiritual memoir classes and. Uh, mystic poetry and, you know, around the country and in Europe, and it's just amazing to hear people's stories. I mean, I've never heard a story that's bored me yet. It's just such a privilege to hear it mm-hmm. and to, to, feel, to feel the uniqueness of those people, those people's lives, mm-hmm. um, and mm-hmm. how theirs, their particular life is unfolding. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, you couldn't dream it up. <laughs> right, right, and that's, yeah. that's a wonderful thing to be authentic. And just let go of all the, you know, the, the the trappings, and just be yourself, and let go of all the stuff that's been holding us down, and and just float above it. Um, right. You mentioned you do um, mystic poetry and teaching, and I wanted to have a moment before we have to go uh, for you to tell us about you know, what you're doing today and uh, your website, so that people can find you. Oh sure, yeah. Um, well, I I am. I do teach. I teach, you know, usually by invitation. I um, did teach at the Northwest Writing Institute at Lewis and Clark College in Portland, and then I've now moved to Mount Shasta. Um, and so I teach um, small private classes, really, um, in spiritual memoir. And so it's it's a mix of, you know, I start with a guided meditation to help draw people gently into their hearts and write from that place. Um, sometimes I'll play music, and then we we'll read usually poems because they're like distilled stories. We we'll read a poem, and then people will write, and and we'll share and critique and offer feedback. And they're intimate and small classes, so people really seem to thrive. And they're also about life, you know. About um, you know, if I if I have a sense of a person, once I have a sense of who he or she may be, I'll, I may offer them a life assignment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, for instance, I had a nun come to my class once, and she had a young boy who she um, used to take care of occasionally, and she came to class one day, and she said, oh, you know, he was just rolling down the hill having such fun today, and I wish that I could have done it. And I said, well, Please do it. Life is too short. Just go and have fun. Go roll down the hill, and don't come back until you do. And, All right. You know, All so, right. So, you know, assignments like that. So you know, so, so the combination of you know helping to transform and, and evolve our humanity and our divinity through through the process of writing. And I've you know over the years, it's been an incredible privilege to see people really open up. You know. Um, oh no. Um, we're just about out of time, and I oh. want to make sure that people know how to reach you. Could you share that uh, website with us? Sure. It's it's anacallen.com. It's A-N-A-C-A-L-L for love, A-N.com, anacallen.com. Wonderful. My, well, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I should say the books are on there, too, the new book. Okay, good. Mom, and, and I'd be happy to hear from any everybody. So. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Anna, thank you so much for being here tonight, and uh, many blessings. Yes, thank you too, Lance. You're a All right. Being. All righty. Good night, Anna, and good night, everybody.